Alright guys, TouchCrop here back again today. Today I want to hear your thoughts on a really interesting topic that came up yesterday, mainly around what Ake said to do with a massive concern he has with the CDL and the way it has been scheduled for the upcoming weeks. There's a, there's a lot of really interesting nuances here that I thought I'd run you guys through because it's very easy to look at this from a very high level and say that Ake's is just salty or whatever. But I genuinely do think he has a point and it's very interesting looking at this, whether this is an intentional thing that Activision Blizzard have done or whether it is, um, you know, I guess a conspiracy theory to a certain degree, although I kind of doubt that is the case. Intrigued to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Once again, thanks for the support on yesterday's video. The last few days have been crazy. Like if you enjoy, subscribe if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate it. And let's hop right into it. So this is what Ake said. Um, let's just expand this onto a bigger screen. So this is the massive concern he has with the CDL. Every team has now realized after reviewing the schedule that the Chicago Huntsman Atlanta Fayers, two biggest brands in the league by the way, and also coincidentally the two biggest teams in terms of you know how good they are, probably the two best teams right now especially off what we've seen on the launch weekends, won't ever be placed in the same group at any of the 8 out of 12 tournaments they compete at while all the other teams have 1 to 4 max placements together kind of funny how these two teams are never in the same group as if the league wants only the two biggest brands making the bracket only instance is these two teams every other team match up at least one time maybe to ensure they have the best chance of making sunday together for the best possible viewership for a league that has continued to stress competitive integrity being paramount this is another case that sadly shows the opposite so okay this is what x comes out and says let's have a look whether there's actually any truth to it so this is what a Kono, I think, puts together. This is the image we want to look at here. So effectively, there's 12 weekends throughout the season. We've had the Minnesota event. There's going to be World Championships at the end. And there's also going to be some sort of all-star weekend going on as well towards the end. But apart from that, we've got 12 weekends. We're starting here in London. Um, and then we go back. We go back and forth. There's a couple in London. And then there's another one in Minnesota. We'll have a look at this in a second. But effectively, the way this works is um, you have got the teams on the top, teams on the left. This is the amount of times they are matching up in pools for the entire season. Now the number in brackets is out of the amount of times they are matching up in pool play in one of these tournaments. This is the amount of times it's a first round matchup. So the blank spaces of course are because Dallas can't play themselves, Chicago can't play themselves, but Dallas Chicago, Dallas Atlanta you see that's happening twice, three times, but never incidentally in the very first round, meaning that they will likely, let's say for example Dallas and Chicago win their, their both their first games when they're in the same pool, that means Dallas and Chicago will then play each other Whoever gets, whoever wins that will get out of the pool. The other team will drop down to one in one and will have to go through. It's like a GSL style. Effectively, you can think of it as a double, a double elimination format within the group. Incidentally, though, despite Chicago and Atlanta being at the same weekend, I think five weekends of the season, they're at the same weekends. Very coincidentally, they are never going to be in the same pool together, which means, really, that we're never going to see Chicago play Atlanta if it's not single elimination, if it's not on, effectively, Sunday, right? Because that's what, what this effectively means. Chicago and Atlanta assuming they both make it out their pools in all occasions, they will only ever match up on Sunday. Aches believes this is the case because they want to push viewership, which may indeed be the case, but I don't even think, even if that is their motive, I don't think that's necessarily the outcome they all get. Because, for example, let's say you put Chicago and Atlanta in the same pool, and they did happen to be the best teams, they would match up against each other in the pool. Let's say Atlanta won in the pools and made it out to the bracket, Chicago went to 1-1, they had to beat a lower tier team to make it out into the bracket, then you get the crazy hype rematch in the, in the you know, grand finals on the Sunday. In this case, with them never matching up in pools, that means they'll only be there in the four-team single elimination bracket, which determines the champion in either the semi-final or the grand final. So that effectively is what this means in reality, which is not necessarily the best thing for the viewership, right? But um, that maybe is what X is implying that, uh, that Activision are trying to do. Now, what you may say is that Chicago and Atlanta, they're the best two teams. It makes sense to give them seeding in the way that they don't match up early in the tournament. That makes sense in a typical tournament style format. Let's say you've got, I don't know, any invite only tournament. You reward the best teams that are seed one and seed two by putting them in the bracket in such a way that they don't match up until the grand finals. Because, of course, in an ideal world, you want seed one and seed two in the grand finals for the viewership and all of that stuff. However... This is a tournament within a league. That's the issue in a sense that let's say you've got 12 teams in a league. If this was just a normal league, every team plays every other team twice, for example, then you would have no situation where the best teams in the league were being prioritized because they still have to play every other team twice. However, in this instance, 
Because Chicago and Atlanta happen to have the biggest brands, you know, it's Optic effectively, old Optic versus FaZe, which is why Aix is implying that they want to push them. And I do think he's correct in that Chicago and Atlanta probably do have the biggest brands. And it does make sense in that way to try and push the championship, you know, the, the grand final Sunday viewership in that sense. They also happen to be the two best teams, which is kind of a side product in the in the point that Aix is trying to push. But let's think about this for one second then. By not matching Chicago and Atlanta up in the pools, effectively it gives, because they happen to be the best teams, if they were lower tier teams, then maybe this would exist to a certain degree, but not really. Chicago now don't have to play Atlanta in any of the pools, which effectively gives them an easier run to get to the Sunday to get out of the bracket, and therefore gives them an easier run to get to you know the more points. If you look at every other team, let's say Atlanta are the best team in the game, Chicago is second best, every other team has to play Atlanta, a lot more times than Chicago does, if you think about it in that sense, which really means in terms of pool play, Chicago now have the easiest run, or if Chicago are the best team and it turns out that way, then Atlanta have the easiest run to get the most points, which means that just by being the best team, you now have the advantage of even having a, a better example, a better chance to play lower tier teams in pools to get even more CDL points. Effectively meaning that if you're Chicago or Atlanta, in theory, now because they're the two best teams, you should now have a better chance of actually winning the league and becoming higher in the standings just because you happen to be the best team. That's not really something that should happen in a league. It can happen in individual tournaments. I can see why that you know, can be an issue, though, in terms of competitive integrity, as Aix is talking about. Now, the real thing to add on to that is even if this was based on seeding and they decided that Chicago and Atlanta, being the best two teams, they wouldn't put them in the same pool to try and make sure they get the best Championship Sunday grand final matchup, that cannot be the case because these schedules were organized in advance of this previous weekend. If they did any sort of seeding analysis in their own heads, it would have had to been on arbitrary pre-season, pre-tournament stuff, which should have meant that Empire and Atlanta were considered the best two teams coming into Minnesota online in the online environment. Chicago Huntsman were third. If you were going to base it off seeding, you would not see, in theory, Chicago and Atlanta being the two teams that don't match up, which is what Paddy P is saying here. The schedule was formed long before Minnesota, I discovered some of the schedules we'll look at in a second, I think about the you know, January the 19th or something like that, so a fair long time before Minnesota, this has been set in stone, which does really add credence to the idea that this isn't based on seeding, this is based on branding. Now, of course, the question that goes along with that is, is this really an issue, right? So we'll have a look through some of these. So this is at the Atlanta event, this is the one that just proceeds, it just comes after London. Minnesota Rocker Paris Legion, Royal Ravens Mutineers. Then we have Huntsman and Ultra in Group B and Atlanta Phase are playing in Group A. Then we have the next time they see each other, which is in Chicago. Atlanta Phase in Group B playing Royal Ravens first. Huntsman in Group A playing the Subliners first. Then we have Minnesota, Atlanta Phase in Group A playing Seattle, Huntsman in Group B playing Mutineers. Then we have New York, Huntsman in Group B playing Royal Ravens, Atlanta in Group A playing Gorillas. Then we have Toronto, Atlanta in um, you know Group B playing Minnesota, Chicago in Group A playing Seattle. Seems to me very unlikely this is just coincidence, especially given these teams have the biggest brand. However, as I talked about at the beginning of the video, this may not even be the best from a viewership standpoint because, you know, it, it, let's say Atlanta Faze and Chicago Huntsman are the best two teams, they're probably going to get out their pools anyway, which means if you do put them in the same pool once or twice, you may have the scenario of, oh, Faze beat Huntsman in the pools, let's see if Huntsman can bounce back when they match up in the grand finals. That might, as I say, be an even better storyline. The real question is, does this matter, right? Because from a business perspective, this makes perfect sense, I guess. It gives the best possible chance that Atlanta and Chicago match up on the Sunday when we want them to, I guess when Activision wants them to, to maximize the viewership in terms of, you know, not only just the best two teams when they're organized, they didn't even know that it was going to be the best two teams, I imagine, but it turns out they pretty much are the best two teams. We'll have to see how it goes throughout the season, of course. Things could change up very, very significantly indeed, but they are the two biggest brands. This maximizes the chances, let's say Atlanta Phase or Chicago Huntsman go downhill in terms of the rankings. This now means that it's pretty unlikely that Atlanta will ever be knocking, um, well, it's impossible, that Atlanta will ever be knocking out of Chicago Huntsman or, you know, of the other way round in the pools that will only be happening in the championship bracket. So, as Penny P says, obviously is very frustrated that this seems to say that, you know, competitive integrity is secondary to viewership and the success of the league in, in terms of that sense. I really can understand that from a business perspective. It does seem frustrating, though, and something of a kick in the teeth 
to uh, to, you know, to lower tier teams, I guess, like Aix. Aix is looking at his schedule, for example, and he's thinking, okay, Los Angeles Gorillas, let's find them over here, like LAG. You know, we're playing at Dallas three times, we're playing Atlanta twice, we're playing Chicago twice, we're playing New York twice, like all these teams we're playing a lot of the times in pools, whereas if you're Atlanta, um, you know, you don't have that same issue, you, you're not playing Chicago at all in that sense, which I can imagine why it is frustrating for lower tier teams feeling like just because you're not necessarily the best means you're already at a disadvantage in that sense, so you know, Ix does a lot of tweets, tweets about this. That would be irrelevant. The point is, this is obviously intended. Really intrigued to hear your thoughts. Of course, this does make sense from a business standpoint. I think Aix's point really is about the hypocrisy of like, okay, you're saying you're all about competitive integrity, but at the same time, you're favoring the teams with the biggest brands by not only producing content around them, like the campaign on the Huntsman, but also giving them the best possible chance to make the championship final, you know, the championship Sunday in the grand final, for example, against each other. Of course, we understand that from a business perspective. That really isn't the point. The point is really about competitive integrity. And I think Eggs does have a fair point, to be honest. It does seem like there is some legitimacy to his ideas. Um, and, you know, he goes on a, a pretty pretty big tirade here. Viewership retention at the cost of sacrificing the competitive integrity of the league. What? Have you never competed in anything? Definitely a fair point here for Eggs. And, of course, he's not on these two teams that we're talking about. So it's very easy to say that, you know, okay, Eggs only cares about himself. He only cares about the teams that he's on because... Of course, they don't have the best chance given the situation, which is an understandable conclusion. But I don't really think that's the case. A lot of stuff Aix does call out, um, you know, despite him you know, being in, in the beneficiary of stuff throughout his career. He has been pretty impartial on the whole. And yeah, he does some tweets going at Optic fans here, which is kind of entertaining. Then uh, Karma starts talking about uh, the, some, some practice situations that happened at Minnesota. Talking about, yeah, I couldn't even realize what he was talking about here initially. But effectively what he was talking about in this tweet, um, which you guys can read on screen. If you'd like to pause it, you can go through it in just a second here. Um, this is how Karma replies. Effectively, it was translated really as uh, in, in Minnesota, Seattle were trying to scrim, but there was other teams, apparently maybe FaZe in Minnesota, that were sitting down like hogging the stations in a way, which is what uh, Karma was annoyed about. Which kind of just went on the on the back of this, and you know another communication kind of you know continues here with with Crowder and X. But that's kind of aside from the main topic. Really intrigued to hear your thoughts on this down below. Me and Hex have a tremendous amount of respect for one another. We always stop and talk at least once every event. This is a CDL matter and not upholding its competitive integrity values that they've stressed so much has nothing to do with the teams. They are just examples. Intrigued to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you think Eggs has a point? Even if he does have a point, do you think this is really the big deal? If it's to the betterment of the league and Call of Duty as a whole in terms of the viewership side... I can kind of understand why they're doing it, but as, you know, someone who, who likes to uphold competitive integrity myself, and I'm sure for the other players within the league, they're very frustrated with this, especially given that these schedules were sorted much in advance of this weekend even happening, before we even knew how good the teams were. I guess that's the crucial point. Thanks for watching, as always. Like if you guys enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you next time.